In part two, we're going to cover many of the same topics we did in part one with just some minor variations. And I also wanted to give you uh, perhaps a little bit closer view here. So you can better see the, the surfaces that we're working with. I'm also going to use some lubricant this time through just to see if we can get a little bit better surface finish. We'll end with drilling a larger hole. Uh, last time we just did a starter hole, but this time we'll go with maybe a um, quarter inch or three eighths inch hole into the end of the piece. This will be in preparation for boring in a future video. Now last time I gave you instructions that to, to make the cut, um, back it off, move, go back in and, and to keep backing it off. The main reason for that is you need to get used to the, the direction that you're going to be turning these wheels and what effect that they have. Just as practice. In an actual machining operation, you don't need to do that back off and come back in with each pass. So we're going to show that difference here and see how it how that works and speeds up our operations a little bit. One last thing that I want to mention is that I did actually end up changing over the speed pulley to where we're on the lower speed, lower torque setting. Now I've moved the bit up. We're not touching the workpiece, but we're close. So we've got enough space to easily clear it as we rotate it. And we've checked that pulling it all the way back, um, we will also clear. So we're going to set our depth of cut to 10 thousandths, so 0 0.010. So previously I would have stated to back off the cutter. In this case, we're just going to go straight back in with it. We will get another very light finish cut. That's okay because this was basically due to tool flex. So now I put a little bit of lubricant on there and set for another 10 thousandths. And we'll just go straight back in. Again, this is going to take a very light cut. And we want to go just past center to take out that little nub. And then we're going to come back out one more time. So here we've got a, a pretty nice cut. Um, still could use some improvement on probably increasing the speed of the spindle to get that a little bit more polished. And then I'm also noticing that my tool height is set a little low because of that little nub that we get left in the middle. middle.
So there's a dry cut. But at a little bit higher RPM. You can also see that I actually increased the feed rates there as well, so probably canceled them out. I'm going to try to adjust this tool holder. Just loosen the front screw and tighten the back screw to try to bring up that tip. And that took care of our little dot there in the middle. Now we're going to take a very shallow cut at a higher RPM. So with cutting fluid, now it's going to go back in. See if we can't smooth out the surface a little bit more. So pretty nice. We've got some little flakes from our cut on there, but other than that, um, that surface is quite smooth and I would say ready for polishing. I'm going to go ahead and cut the outside diameter here down a little bit, just so we can go through that with coolant. So we'll have to start by adjusting the angle of our tool. Now previously we went close to 90 degrees. I've shifted it a little bit to where the uh, edge is, is pointing more in that direction. So I just put a little bit of lubricant on the tool itself. This will help any welding from the aluminum. We don't have any on the workpiece. So this time we'll put just a little bit on the workpiece itself. So now we've got a little bit on the workpiece as well. And we're just going to come in five thousandths, so a very light cut. So very, very smooth. You can see we're getting some quite long um, cutoffs. So just the little spirals and chips coming off. It's usually a pretty good sign. Now this piece is going to have a very sharp edge here. Um, we didn't really talk about breaking that down previously, but this go around we are going to go ahead and break that edge down a little bit. Now, there are a few ways of doing that. One of the easiest ways is actually going to be using a file. Now, some people are intimidated or afraid of using a file on the lathe. The biggest thing that you need to watch out for here is how you hold it. But this is going to allow us to put a chamfer on there very quickly, as well as to do radius turning if we wanted to. 
So for safety's sake, on the, the first time that you're working with the file, turn the, the speed down as far as you can. Make sure that you're, you're holding the file in this direction. We don't want it to where the, the teeth are rubbing against the piece, but we want it to where the teeth are cutting. And then you just file as you normally would. The advantage here though, is since we've got the spinning of the lathe, we're going to get a much faster cut. So that took that sharp edge off. If you wanted to go a little bit higher speed and put more of a chamfer on there, or again, you can do some work where you're going to round it as you go. Um, you, you can certainly do that, but that breaks that edge off nicely for us. So the other method of doing that is using your cutting tool. We're actually going to use this face of this tool because it has more of a relief angle underneath. So we want to make sure and have that clearance. So we do not want to use this face on the side because it does not have very much of a relief angle at all. So we're just going to bring our tool up to where uh, we get roughly a 45 degree angle. If you have a specific tool for chamfering, which is, is ground square on the end, that will certainly work in this type of operation as well. So here's just a, a view a little bit closer to, to see how that, that edge is broken. It's, it's quite nice. Um, it makes the part look more finished rather than having that square edge. Again, you can do it with either the cutter or a file, however you choose to do it. Um, there are also some deburring tools that will take a, a small amount off of there. We'll show those in a video specifically on filing and deburring. Next, I'm going to go ahead and set up the tailstock, and we're going to drill a little bit larger hole in here, and this time we're going to do it without a starter hole. Okay, so I've got a 3 8 inch drill bit. This is specifically a metalworking drill bit, so it has a split point and 143 degree angle on the tip and we're just going to drill straight we don't have any starter hole or anything like that i have put some lubricant on the bit and let's see how well this goes so right off the bat not sure if you saw or if you, you can see that the drill bit is wandering quite a bit. So this is the reason you really want to use a starter drill. And because we were off center, we're getting quite a bit of shaking in the drill bit now. Put a little bit of lubricant in the hole itself. And let's see if we can go in a little bit farther. A little more lubricant in the hole. So you can hear the bit scrape as it comes out. Um, we definitely did walk a little bit on, on the entry. This is a good example of why you do want to drill those starter holes first. Even on a bit that in theory isn't going to walk because it's designed specifically for, for drilling into metal with that split point and the reduced face angle. 
I guess I should say increased face angle, depending on which way you're looking at it. So just a few more views at, at cutting there. I definitely think that uh, for the beginner, start on that lower speed pulley. That seems to help quite a bit. Um, you don't really want to be doing high speed operations until you're comfortable with the machine. And that lower speed definitely adds a lot of torque. As we saw there, I was pushing in pretty hard and getting some fairly thick chips um, off of the aluminum.